The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. Good evening and welcome to Gen XYZ. I'm Dani Dutanavasam and we have as usual, we bring together a topic that is contemporary to our youth and we try to discuss something that is happening daily, questions that the youth have and really break those down in, on, on those platforms, on those levels itself. And to do that same thing, I have, we have a very a good individual who will really give us a very good insight as in I got a lot of insight from our conversations outside as well. His name is Mr. Sanjika Pereira. He's a, he's a pro professional trainer for leadership and motivation and he also works in sales if I'm not mistaken. Um, Mr. Sanjika, so let's quickly get into the topic yeah. right away. Uh, we are in a pandemic. It's a pandemic period. It's a difficult period for most people. I want to start off with, um, you also teach, you, you, you mentioned to us that you also teach. What are your experiences with this? And then let's quickly move into the subject matter that we are going to discuss today that is on employment. Yeah. And uh, you will give us a breakdown on what these aspects of unemployment that the youth are facing as of now mm. and really dwell into that and talk about mindset, talk about the you know technicalities that are happening on the ground. Yeah. So before we get into all of that um, you know con content, I want to ask you a, a, sort of like an open-ended question, what, what, what do you see that is happening today? Right. Thank you, Danidu. Uh, Danidu, before I get into the topic, uh, such a privilege <laughs> to be here. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for, for joining giving us. <laughs> me the, inviting me to do this uh, little session with you. Uh, so, Danidu, to start off the session with, I want to start off with a simple formula that I always believe in. You see, Danidu, what happens is, when it comes to some one person's expenditure, it naturally becomes an income for someone else, right? So if I give you some money right now, right? Either you have provided me with a service or you have given me a certain product, right? So from the time that the pandemic started, um, if I were to ask you a simple question, if you look around, Danidu, right? In terms of the activity levels, uh, people traveling, somebody traveling from point A to point B for something, or for that matter, going to a hotel for a meal. In, in your view, Danidu, uh, has it increased or decreased? Decreased. Decreased in a big way, yeah. right? Okay, so just let's, let's look at it this way, right? Um, let's say I have money in my hand, right? So if I go from, let's say, point A to point B, right? Uh, with you, I would like to do a quick, quick activity, yeah. right? Mm -hmm and to figure out how many jobs are impacted when you and I travel from point A to point B. So let's count, right? So if I drive a vehicle, first and foremost, that creates jobs at the petrol station. Not only the person who's pumping petrol into the tank, but the whole petrol station as the well. System, system. Yeah. <laughs> then then do spare parts will have an impact when people are traveling around. Then uh, service stations. Right, and if I were to go on uh, to drive a vehicle in the first place, right? To 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 drive, you need to have a vehicle. So leasing, insurance, right? So now, if you really think about it, even from that little activity of moving from point A to point B, there are so many jobs which are created, right? So normal times, right? Normal times, people would travel not necessarily from point A to point B for recreation, right? So right now, people are traveling less, right? People would end up going to, uh, people no, might not necessarily go into a restaurant or for that matter, um, a hotel. So as far as we are concerned, everything has slowed down in a big way, right? So uh, I, would, I would put it this way, right? income levels of people have come down so is the expenditure level for others as well so we have to look at it in both ways right so 
if I were to take you as an example now for, for working here, you will end up earning a salary. Then you will take that salary and let's say you go to a supermarket, right? So from that supermarket, you will end up buying goods. So what will happen to the income levels of that uh, supermarket staff members? Increase. Increase, right? So they have more money in their hand. And when they have more money in their hand, now they can go on a holiday, right? So when they go to a hotel, then do what happens when you go to a hotel or when that person goes into a hotel and spend money? What happens to the hotel staff member's income? That increases. Increases, <laughs> right? And then uh, what happens to their ability of being able to spend that money somewhere else? Increases. So my point that I'm trying to make is this simple thing my expenditure becomes your income is a whole fine cycle, right? So when I slow down my spending, that will have impact on you. Yeah. When you slow down your spending, it will have impact on me, right? So what we have to realize right now is COVID has slowed down the level of activities in the economy. Now to give this a positive spin, Right? The fact that at a certain point in time, let's hope soon, when the pandemic comes under control, I would like to believe that most of these jobs will come back. Right? Danidu, hospitality industry requires people. Right? Right now, if the tourists are not coming in, then we may not necessarily want certain jobs. But when the industry start to pick up, right, those places will require people. The okay? requirements will reappear. Absolutely. Yeah. When the pandemic is over, Danidu, right, I don't think we are going to come to a situation where buses are going to be automated. True. <laughs> right? We need the drivers. Yeah. Right? Planes are not going to fly by themselves. We need the cabin crew. We need the pilots. So the good news is the way I see it, looking at this context, most of these jobs will come back again. Mm. That said, it is very important during a time like this, you don't become too hard on yourself. Okay? Because let, let me ask you a question, right? Right now, if you have a toothache, okay, serious toothache, and if you get to hear about a natural disaster that took place in another country, right? So many people are impacted. Tell me honestly, what do you bother about the most? About that natural disaster or about your toothache? Toothache. Toothache. <laughs> You're not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I, I will do that I will do the same thing as well myself. Yeah, yeah. Right? Why I asked you that question is because Danidu, sometimes when people are facing problems such as unemployment, you tend to get into an island mindset in, in my observation of people. Right? Island mindset is you tend to feel that you know, my god, I'm impacted. Why did this happen to me? Uh, what can I do about it? Um, without realizing too much as to sometimes how lucky you are with the kind of circumstances that you tend to have. Then I associate a lot of people due to my job role, yes. right? Um, except for very few people, right? Very few people Danidu, I can't think of many people who were not impacted by this pandemic, right? But when you're facing the problem, you don't see it that way, right? When you're facing the problem, you see as if your Only income you went down, exactly. I didn't get my promotion, mm -hmm. I didn't get my job, right? You're not going to think, oh, that guy got a salary cut, this person uh, lost the job. You don't, you don't look at it that way, right? So. The most important thing is you need to understand that this is something that you should not take it personally, right? From year 2020, right? Uh, sorry, 2020. One. Yeah, yeah, no, no, 2020, 2020. right? Um, 
in the month of April itself, uh, you, you mentioned the work that I do, right? Mm -hmm. So I do a little bit of lecturing and more of a professional trainer, right? Uh, in marketing, I'm sure you'd have learned something called the product life cycle, mm -hmm. right? So it goes from introduction, growth, maturity to decline, right? Let me tell you what happened to my cycle. The business was going up like this and it was doing very well. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen a cycle like this. It came down like this. Immediate decline. Right? Immediate decline. Everybody stopped, right? Now it has started to pick up again, but immediate decline, right? So I was impacted. But for my luck, you know, I was lecturing. So lecturing immediately picked up, but seriously impacted, right? So I know so many stories where people got seriously impacted, right? So you need to understand that I got impacted not because I was a bad trainer, okay? It has nothing to do, my s do with my skill set. It's the environment the that went. Yeah. Uh, went against me. So, please don't try to be too hard on yourself. I say this because, Danidu, let me ask you a simple question, okay? Tell me, would you, obvious question by the way, right? Would you like to have in your life one problem or two problems? One problem. <laughs> Definitely one problem. Definitely one problem, right. I ask that question because due to unemployment, Danidu, now let's say for example, somebody's income level impacted. Now, I'm sure you would agree with me, Danidu, that if the income level is impacted, you can't have the same lifestyle that you have been having before. Exactly. Fair comment? Yeah. Right? So, <laughs> in the family, somebody can make a sensitive comment, uh, right, about something that cannot be done, can't go on holiday, can't buy the fancy food from a restaurant, right, on, on your budget cuts and so on and so forth, right? Now, what happens is that can lead to family argument. It trickles down to another level, yeah. So another problem. Yeah. Now tell me, Danidu, how many problems do I have if I get into argument? More than <laughs> what you had. If you yeah. <laughs> now I have unemployment problem and a family problem also to look after. Would you agree with me when I say that? So you have to ensure that you guard yourself against situations like that, right? Some people who are emotional can take it can take it very very personally. And that can lead to certain other behaviors also, right? So, on a false paradigm, then it is somebody can move on to extremely harmful behaviors like alcohol, like tobacco, right? Even worse. So, alcohol, tobacco, any of those harmful behaviors are not going to solve the unemployment problem. So that's why I say you got to be mindful that you look at the problem as objectively as you can and don't let that problem create another problem. <laughs> how can you, in my view, Danidu, how can you face this situation a little better? Okay? Let me first and foremost tell you it is normal to feel at a time like this, especially if you are a youngster, right? Just imagine, okay? Uh, from the age of, let's say, five, all the way up to 18, for 13 years, you did your education. Mm. Probably you did your degree also, True. right? And you were dreaming to get into the corporate world. And soon as you entered the corporate world, then you do? COVID. COVID came. <laughs> <laughs> you were not permanent, you were asked to leave. Exactly. Genuinely tell me, how do you feel? It's extremely bad. <laughs> Frustrated, irritated, sad. Yeah. Right? Um, in a situation like that, the best thing to do is find somebody who's sensible. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who's mature. Who can guide you through this. To start off with, you're absolutely right. To start off with, to have a conversation with. If you want to release, Bad behaviors are not the way forward. <laughs> Talk to somebody who can guide you, who cares for you. And also on top of that, these days, whenever I meet somebody who, has, who is impacted, I put my sensitive hat on. Be empathetic, be caring, mm -hmm. right? The person is already feeling very bad. 
how can you make that person feel a little better? I, right. I, I want to take this conversation forward from that. I think you gave a very, very good context to our entire discussion. We'll take a very short break and we'll come back, Ms. Sanjika. We are, with, uh, we are in conversation with Ms. Sanjika Pereira and giving us some very good insights. Stay with us. This is Gen XYZ. Back to Jen XYZ, we are in conversation with uh, Mr. Sanjika Pereira, who is a, a, a professional trainer for leadership and he also works in sales. He's also a teacher, <laughs> uh, multiple <laughs> fields, uh, a lot of experience and I'm, I'm very sorry I have to interrupt you at random points for you know, get the, get the program going. Sure. But there's a lot of, uh, lot of interesting things that you have been telling us and I, I want to let you carry on. Mm. But I'm just going to throw a question at you and then you can like uh, take that forward. The problem with youth unemployment, Yeah, do you see it primarily as a mindset issue? Because you have explained it in that way, you have shown that, and that, that's a very important message I should mm. say at this point in time to tell people, tell the youth, yeah. you know, we can do something about this within this context. And even in our conversations outside, mm. you gave me phenomenal examples of people that uh, recovered that yeah. you know made the best of what what where yeah. they were i think our viewers also, also very much like to hear these things mm. my question is is it a mindset issue can they face the circumstance with a better mindset can they come out of it with a better hmm. mindset? right so um 100 percent agreed right uh, it is lot to do with the mindset right to enter into that question uh, danidu let me let me uh, take a simple example you see when you do your studies right and and since the program is targeting targeted towards the youth, youth right um, when you do your studies right let's say for example after your a levels right chances are when you do your thereafter you might do a degree privately or in the university system right and then what happens is you will when you enter the workforce right honestly tell me what kind of a job will you look for like please uh, good day level results, <laughs> uh, good degree from a good university. What, what kind of a job will you look something for? Something high paying or something with good exposure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and also uh, maybe a job that you may not necessarily want to sweat. True. Okay. Right? <sighs> when you come to the market in a situation like this, Danidu, you might have a situation where the ideal job that you are looking for might not necessarily be available in the market. Let, let me take an example, right? Um, let's say banking, right? So starting point for a banker usually is a banking assistant. That's a permanent card job usually in a bank where you, you come in as a banking assistant, right? Uh, probably you're coming from a banking background also, meaning your mother is a banker, father is a banker, parents had very high aspirations or very high hopes that you will also one day you Become will end up being a banker. You did your studies very well, right? You got your grades, everything is done. Now you come into the market, right? All of a sudden, Dani do, you realize that only as example, okay, this is not the real situation, but only as example that you might realize that, oh my God, banks are not hiring. What I would like to tell you here is I am a big believer and speaking to the entire youth also right this way where I am here right at the moment I don't have a job right I just want to show you that place over there as the destination that I want to get into which I want to get into a bank as a permanent card member right. So now there is a barrier in between the barrier is the company that I am looking to or the industry that I'm looking to get into is not hiring. But maybe these organizations might be hiring sales professionals on a contract basis. The thing is, I never saw myself as a salesman. I saw myself as a banker. So my point to you is this. In a time like this, you are absolutely right. I, I love what you said. Okay. In terms of getting to your destination, 
maybe market conditions are not that conducive for you to be so demanding and get exactly what you want. But then it, there can be ways where you can go around it. True. Want to be a banker? Cool. Only as example. Okay? Right now, what are my options? Maybe I will join that contract role. Because in my view, companies tend to prefer, this is subjective, somebody can argue, right? But companies tend to prefer an internally top performing candidate to an external party whom they don't know anything about. So if you join the organization, develop the right kind of relationships in the organization, right? Chances are finally you can end up in that destination, right? So, so that kind of an open mind, right? If I can't go and achieve my target directly, is there another way that I can go and achieve my target indirectly? True. I think uh, that really paves a way to something that I want to like uh, take with you. You meet people. Yeah. And like people, are just, it's it's the sort of occupation that you do and you, you have to work with and around people. Hmm. I want to, you know, kit tailor our conversation now towards our conclusive notes where yeah. we will we'll touch on this within the last two segments. Sure. But I want to touch on key characteristics, key skills that you like to see in people, key skills that you like to improve in people, things mm. that you tap into when you work in your leadership program. So where mm. what do you what do you think that people in this pandemic period, okay. I'm not saying uh, employability skills are constant mm. and it's uh, if someone has these, that's the only way they'll get employed. Sure. But w what can they do as like, let's, let's, let's talk strategy in terms of yeah. uh, people within their homes. now. Uh, something that we spoke about outside yeah. was also on planning and <laughs> yeah. we had to touch that as well. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, firstly, we are living in an instant world. Meaning, um, again, right, uh, my, my advice, direct advice to youth is, uh, have you heard this term called life is short? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you can say that also there's nothing wrong. But in my view, Danidu, in the corporate world, your life is long your life is very long, right? Uh, I say this because sometimes I meet 20 year olds, right? When they don't get a promotion, right? That was promised to them, right? If the company asks for three months, they get frustrated and they leave, okay? Um, I asked this question outside as well. Now let me ask you here. How long can a human being work for today? My guess is, 20, 25 years, 30 years, okay. about 30 years. Okay. Uh, you and I have different views on this one, <laughs> right? If you enter the corporate world at the age of 20, Danidu, retirement age, let's say, is 55, mm. right? I know for a fact that most of the people who retire at the age of 55 from their company and then start off on their own, not they will go and do something else, right? With the advancement of technology and medicine, I believe people are fit to work until 70, my view. Right? Maybe not on a permanent card, maybe on a temporary basis, consulting, all that, you're fit to work. Right? So, in that sense, Danidu, right? Five years to figure out, because we are talking about strategy, right? Five years to figure out as to what you like is acceptable for me. Okay? So, maybe these are just ballpark figures. Age of 20 to 25. Try to figure out as to who you are like and what you would like to do. Whatever said and done just after university, just after school, when you come to the corporate world, is a big change now, right? Now, I have gone through that cycle, so for me, it's not a big deal. But for a, a youngster, it's a huge change, Danidu, right? So maybe you may want to get into two or three different industries, experiment, right? And then ask yourself the question as to whether do I enjoy this? from a strategy point of view. So, so my first point is don't be in a hurry. Don't judge too fast. And when you work for about three to four years, in my view, you will have a good understanding as to what your strengths are, what you may not necessarily like or enjoy. Can I ask you a question in offices? Have you seen lazy people? <laughs> Have you seen lazy people? Yeah. Right. Okay. My view is slightly different. 
You see, no human being is lazy. It's just that they are doing something that doesn't inspire them. Right? Let me give you an example. Right? At the age of about 24, 25, I realize I am high energy. <laughs> right? So, by not necessarily by accident, but from my small days, I wanted to do sales. I enjoyed sales. Going out in the, little different, right? So, going out in the hot sun, meeting people, selling products, meeting diverse kind of people, that is something that I enjoyed. I realized, okay, I have high energy, and then an office job is not necessarily for me. Okay? Now, my, my assessment of myself is in a place like audit, I would have been a disaster. <laughs> okay? In a place like, these are all brilliant jobs, okay, audit, in a call center where you have to sit and answer 150 calls for a day in the same seat, maybe not my thing, right? So maybe if you are underperforming in your job, maybe you are involved in something that you may not necessarily want to be involved in. So take some time to figure that out. Once you figure that out, at the age of about 25, 26, right? I ask you, by that time you should be able to understand these are my strengths, this is what I'm going to go ahead in, this is maybe not the area that I want to try out, right? And then from that point onwards, you can ask yourself four questions. These are the four questions I ask myself. Number one is, where am I now? Okay, so you can write it down. Mm -hmm. And then, for you to have a target, you need to have an end destination. No? Where do I want to be? Okay. Where am I now? Where, Where do I want to be? And then, my earlier story. There are different paths to a destination. How, how do, do I get, get there? there? <laughs> okay, how do I get there? Right? Maybe I want to be a CEO of a bank, example, right? You have to start off as a banker, no? right? If you want to be a CEO of a bank, then you can't go and join the government's industry, right? You have to, you have to join Something a bank, right? to <laughs> So how do I get there, right? Maybe starting off as a banking assistant. Mm -hmm. What is the best way right now is the fourth question. The fourth question is important because what you want to ideally achieve might not necessarily be possible right now. So maybe you need to take a step back. Right. <laughs> you need to take a step back <laughs> and see whether there's another way that you can go about achieving your goals. I, 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 I want to take a, uh, I, I want to give our viewers a little bit of time to think on it, but uh, before that, just, just before we go into a break, I want to ask you, now when you, when you look at when you look at these people, do you just in a short give, a, give yeah. an answer and we'll discuss this in detail yeah. uh, in the next break. Yeah. Do you think we should have a plan? Is that your way or should we be spontaneous? Should we go into things spontaneously? You should definitely have a plan. Okay. But hold on. I, I'll let you explain. <laughs> one, but one thing before we go yeah, to the break. Yeah. You should definitely have a plan, Danidu, but with an open mind to change the plan. Right. <laughs> I think a very good note. I want to give our viewers a chance to think about these things that uh, Ms. Janjik has told us. I think given I need some time to think about it as well. Uh, we'll take a very short break. We'll come back and we'll go into more conclusive segments on what we can do while we're at our homes while we're dealing with this issue of unemployment as a youngster. You're with Gen XYZ. Stay with us. Welcome back to Gen XYZ. This will be our last segment. Obviously, uh, I feel a lot of things are falling between the cracks because time is something that we have to battle with. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Ms. Sanjik, I want to get your take without taking much of your time. Hmm. Unemployment, as you said, it is not only an issue an individual faces, it could be a family, it could be a lifetime of goals hmm. that they are suddenly facing this pandemic. Hmm. And 
you know, the youth are everywhere and the youth are confused and they are the ones that will look at this program and wonder what they can do. Mm. And I think you touched on this, I want you to touch on this again. Right. Uh, it's the aspect of doing something you like because now it's doing something you can or doing something you can be employed into. Hmm. Should we forget about everything and just go and get employment, make some money? Or you said something very interesting, to invest our time, to invest ourselves in the final goal. And you yeah. gave us a, like a sort of thematic action plan also hmm. to, to uh, go about by it. I want to bring this conversation to that plan issue because something that we see is plans fail. <laughs> yeah. More often, like yeah. there, there, is a, is, there is a possibility of that happening. Mm. Um, first touch on, should I be doing what I like or should I be doing what I can find, the work that I can find? As well? Depends on your personal situation, right? The real question is, Danidu, right? In a topic like this, it's very difficult to fit the answers to everyone's requirement, yeah. right? The real question you got to ask yourself is, do I have to work? Or do I want to work? The difference is, if you want to make your ends meet, right, financially, then you are in a no option scenario. In a situation like that, as a practical person, I would say, find something, get on with it, find a way to enjoy it and somehow or the other do it because you have a higher purpose. Maybe you have a sick mother or a sick father at home, right? Maybe you are the one who's making, uh, taking care of the household, right? It's easy for me to come to interview and say, do what you like, but your family situations are different. I, I, I want to be practical, right? In a situation like that, if I were that person, I will not think about what I like, I will find out something that I can do, do and I will do it for the family because uh, there's a higher purpose, there's a bigger purpose. But the point is when you do something that you don't like, you're not going to enjoy it, Tanitu, right? You know, I mean, that is something that I have seen in people. So maybe you will do this for the time being and will consider, uh, you will still contribute, you will try to do something meaningful, but is there a possibility where I can find some way or the other? right uh, where I can I can find something that I can I would like to do in the long run if you don't really have that kind of a financial stress maybe you can take a bit of time to find something that you like right like I said earlier maybe if the direct way is not possible maybe an indirect mm -hmm. way, right? Let's say, for example, garments industry. I want to be a merchandiser. They are not hiring merchandisers. Can I be an intern there, right? If I'm interning there now, I really don't have a financial issue, right? So, you know, I mean, but when I go to that company, I'm going to have a uh, boss, right? And then, Danidu, I'm sure you will agree with me. You can be a brilliant presenter, but this program is not possible without all the other support yeah. staff who are taking Huge great support staff, staff who are doing this program for you. Okay. So in this world, Danidu, you are not going to be, no matter how great you are, what I believe is you are not going to achieve too many great things by yourself. So you need the support of others. But if you go and join a place, right, not necessarily for money, but if you do it, because someday you have a bigger goal in mind, chances are you will develop your relationships, right? Uh, relationships can always help you in the corporate world. So the real question over there is, Danidu, do I need to work or do I want to work? If you need to work, there is one avenue you have to take. <laughs> that's a different matter. If you want to work, that's a different avenue that you have to take. So that that's the answer to the question. Yeah, uh, I just I, I don't want to take any of your time. If you can go into that aspect that we are talking about outside, and it was I found it very interesting as well about plans failing, hmm. about strategies going wrong. Yeah, how do you as that is exactly what a person that is yeah. unemployed would be facing? They would be be confused as to uh, what they have to be doing as of now. How personally have you had that kind of situation that you have faced? And if you could give us sort of like a practical example. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Like I, like I told you also, yeah. right? And I, I have absolutely no problem in sharing this. You see, Danidhi, you can have all the plans in the world, right? But life will throw some curveballs at you, right? Uh, for example, somebody who was having high dreams 
about starting their job in the month of March. Maybe COVID came along that way. To get to that point, Danidu, because we are a cricket playing nation, <laughs> right? Let me uh, take a simple example, right? Imagine that you have won the toss, 50 over match, very quickly. Your target was to go and score 350 runs in 50 overs, Danidu. But when you went to bat, Danidu, right? All plans were great, <laughs> right? Bath were no fully competent. <laughs> but when you went to the wicket, Within the first 10 overs, you lost 5 wickets, 68 runs on the board. Now, can I ask you, is it practical for you to still in next 40 overs to score the remaining runs to get to 350 or should you do something else? You have to change strategy. <laughs> yeah, right. That is where, what is the best way right now? So, in a situation like that, Danidu, what I would say is, right, Maybe next 20 overs, don't try to lose any more wickets. Score about another 100. Let's reflect. Maybe 350 is ideal score, but even with 250, we can give it a challenge. We can give a good run to the team, right? Let's try to get to there by about the 45th over. And then let's see how much we can score. And I'm sure you might agree with a good partnership, we can even score more than 350, mm -hmm. right? I said this because, remember I told you, you have to be flexible with your plans right have the plan but a life can really throw a curveball at you for example Danitu, in year 2015 right i had fantastic plans i had plans for my development i had plans for my career uh, frankly um, i was con i always wanted to start on my own right uh, move on from the corporate or that was the dream right so i was thinking right maybe i was even close to making that decision and moving on one day okay long story short i had a small hearing loss in one of my ears um i also thought not no big deal absolutely no signs okay uh, i do my exercises i eat healthy right i never thought that this is possible went to a doctor one thing led to another i was diagnosed with a brain tumor tumor in my brain right now just like that cricket match where i also had 350 runs in 50 overs but all of a sudden i was maybe seven down for 68 <laughs> right so when a life throws a curveball at you like that you have to immediately sit down and ask yourself the question as to at this point in time how am I going to make the best out of it? You see, in a situation like this, Danidu, you need to ask good questions from yourself. And it is also helpful to kind of have people who, are, who can guide you, who are intelligent, who have the depth to be able to guide you, right? If that is there, no matter what happens, right? There is something that can't change, no, Danito. No matter what you do to me, whatever the environment does to me, one thing that you can't do is you can't take away my willpower, right? In other words, the mindset that you were talking about. So, if you have the right mindset, maybe as much as we can't get to that ultimate goal at the time that I have planned to do it, you take a step back, if you work around it, end of the day you would still deliver a good result also about this question about whether should you do something that you love i, I really want to touch on this one that i do you see i again i want to be practical right mm -hmm. I, I i've heard a lot of people say do what you love light love what you do and <laughs> all that right motivational speakers and all that i'm all for that right but even in your in the job that you do that i do I am yet to find too many people, as a matter of fact, in myself included, people who like 100% of their job. Every element of it. Every element of it. Give me an example, okay? Have you come across teachers who really care about their students, who want to give everything for their students, right? Really dedicated to teach their students. Have you come across teachers like yeah. that? Yeah? That is because they love teaching, True. right? I know many teachers like that who love their students.
students they want to contribute go and ask them whether they enjoy paper marking <laughs> <laughs> for, for find me find me teachers who enjoy paper marking I, if you find i said enjoy <laughs> right they may enjoy teaching no two words about it it's a rewarding career True. right but if they enjoy paper marking then i would like to have a long chat with them <laughs> right uh, the word is enjoy okay so so uh, you have to take these things with a pinch of salt love what you do but always remember in your job there are parts that you may not necessarily like but in order to do what you love to do remember what you may not necessarily enjoy is also part of the package right so in that sense my request to youth is don't be too fussy 90% of what you do just a percentage 80% majority of what you do if you enjoy it i believe that's a job for you i think there is a very good note to come to a conclusion we have about one more minute where I, i just want to yeah. steal a few more thoughts from you if you are unemployed as of now yeah and someone comes to you with this yeah. what are the f- what is the first few ideas you would give would you tell because i think you when I mean, we had our conversations or you mm. mentioned be positive about it yeah. is that something you would tell within few seconds if you have to mention to an individual that comes to you for counseling or something of that sort right. what, what do you tell them i will ask ask that person questions at this point in time do you need to work or do you want to work need to work find what you can do and do it sure. right no demands there if you want to work in a industry maybe take a little bit of time to um find what you like to do and then you pursue in that along that career mm-hmm. right um i i really want to uh that to make this comment also uh because not everything is doom and gloom also right uh, I'll, i'll i'll tell you a story i actually had three to tell you but i <laughs> I, i understand yeah, we, we don't have, have we, we are running out of time, time right but w- one story is that this happened to a friend of mine right the individual was working in a industry right a very good industry and during covid times i don't know whether it is due to covid or for other reasons restructuring came right the individual got a very good exit package but if you exit during covid times no no jobs a, at a senior level it's even hard to find right but the person had the confidence about the person as well as the skill set to know that even if i go to the market i can find a job with that confidence the person took the package moved on to a company right at a pay cut found a job subsequently at the point of leaving the person didn't have the job moved on then found another job right after doing that for some time maybe the individual was looking out mm-hmm. now will be hired again a senior hr position i'm not sure whether it's director but but at a very in senior another. position in another firm so my point is that is whether the times are good or bad bad times you it's fi- hard to find employment but with the right mindset it can be done complemented with the right skill set the market is still looking for mm-hmm. for good people there are still opportunities yes. i i have to cut you short there i, I know we have, there's a lot more we can discuss but uh thank you sanjika pera for joining us and giving us all of this input a lot of things for our viewers to think about yeah. uh, i thank our viewers for staying with us and really you know going through this process and i hope everyone anyone who's l- looking at unemployment will find employment and find what they like to and find that sort of fulfillment in their lives my name is darin zanwasam thank you so much for staying with us have a great night